ਪਿਛਲੇ ਕੁਝ ਮਹੀਨਿਆਂ ਤੋਂ ਅਮਰੀਕਾ ਤੇ ਪਾਕਿਸਤਾਨ ਦੇ ਵਿਗੜ ਰਹੇ ਰਿਸ਼ਤਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਸੁਧਾਰਨ ਲਈ ਪਾਕਿਸਤਾਨੀ ਅਮਰੀਕਨ ਸੋਸਾਇਟੀ ਆਫ ਨਿਊਯਾਰਕ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਨਿਊਯਾਰਕ ਦੀ ਸਫਕ ਕਾਉਂਟੀ ਵਿਖੇ ਸਥਿਤ ਦ ਰੈਡਸਨ ਹੋਟਲ ਵਿਖੇ ਇੱਕ ਸੈਮੀਨਾਰ ਕਰਵਾਇਆ ਗਿਆ ਜਿਸ ਵਿੱਚ ਲੋਕਲ ਲੀਡਰਸ ਸਮੇਤ ਵੱਡੀ ਗਿਣਤੀ ਵਿੱਚ ਪਾਕਿਸਤਾਨੀ ਅਤੇ ਕਸ਼ਮੀਰੀ ਭਾਈਚਾਰੇ ਨੇ ਸ਼ਮੂਲੀਅਤ ਕੀਤੀ ਨਿਊਯਾਰਕ ਦੇ 3rd ਡਿਸਟ੍ਰਿਕਟ ਤੋਂ ਕਾਂਗਰਸਮੈਨ ਟਾਮ ਸਾਊਜ਼ੀ ਨੇ ਮੁੱਖ ਮਹਿਮਾਨ ਵਜੋਂ ਇਸ ਸੈਮੀਨਾਰ ਵਿੱਚ ਹਾਜ਼ਰੀ ਲਵਾਈ ਅਮਰੀਕਾ ਪਾਕਿਸਤਾਨ ਸਬੰਧਾਂ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਨਾਲ ਅਫਗਾਨਿਸਤਾਨ ਜੰਗ ਅਤੇ ਭਾਰਤ ਪਾਕਿਸਤਾਨ ਰਿਸ਼ਤਿਆਂ ਬਾਰੇ ਵੀ ਵਿਚਾਰ ਚਰਚਾ ਕੀਤੀ ਗਈ ਇਸ ਸੈਮੀਨਾਰ ਵਿੱਚ ਵਿਸ਼ੇਸ਼ ਤੌਰ ਤੇ ਸਿੱਖ ਵਫਦ ਨੇ ਵੀ ਹਿੱਸਾ ਲਿਆ ਅਤੇ ਅਮਰੀਕਾ ਪਾਕਿਸਤਾਨ ਭਾਰਤ ਸਬੰਧਾਂ ਵਿੱਚ ਸਿੱਖ ਫੈਕਟਰ ਤੇ ਵੀ ਨਜ਼ਰਸਾਨੀ ਕੀਤੀ ਗਈ ਕਾਂਸਲੇਟ ਜਨਰਲ ਆਫ ਪਾਕਿਸਤਾਨ ਦੇ ਨੁਮਾਇੰਦੇ ਵੀ ਇਸ ਮੌਕੇ ਹਾਜ਼ਰ ਸਨ ਪਾਕਿਸਤਾਨੀ ਨੁਮਾਇੰਦਿਆਂ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਅਮਰੀਕਾ ਪਾਕਿਸਤਾਨ ਸਬੰਧਾਂ ਦੇ ਇਤਿਹਾਸ ਪਛੋਕੜ ਅਤੇ ਸਾਂਝ ਬਾਰੇ ਚਾਨਣਾ ਪਾਇਆ ਗਿਆ ਯੂਐਸਏ ਐਂਗੇਜ ਇਨ ਅ ਕੋਲਡ ਵਾਰ ਵਿਦ ਸੋਵੀਅਤ ਯੂਨੀਅਨ ਫੋਰ ਅਬਾਊਟ 50 ਇਅਰਸ ਪਾਕਿਸਤਾਨ ਸਟੂਡ ਸਾਈਡ ਬਾਈ ਸਾਈਡ ਵਿਦ ਯੂਐਸਏ ਟਿਲ ਸੋਵੀਅਤ ਯੂਨੀਅਨ ਵਾਸ ਪੁਸ਼ਡ ਆਊਟ ਆਫ ਅਫਗਾਨਿਸਤਾਨ ਐਂਡ ਡਿਸਪੀਅਰਡ ਫਰਮ ਦੀ ਮੈਪ ਆਫ ਦੀ ਵਰਲਡ our union with the united states has been very very good and in the past few many years but there have been some ups and downs always there are there so it is important that pakistan and usa should cherish this alliance instead of playing blame games both countries should sit together and iron out small differences pakistani american congress is there to help thank you very much while history has been unkind to pakistan its geography has been its greatest benefit and greatest strength it is uh, resource rich in the northwest people rich in the northeast pakistan is a junction of south asia west asia and central asia a link between source efficient countries and source deficient countries the world is facing energy crisis and terrorism pakistan is a route to transportation and uh, front line state against war on terror pakistani air bases and space for air surveillance of the enemy during cold war in 1950s and 60s to facilitating diplomacy to engage China to establish US China relations through a covert visit of US Secretary of State using Pakistani geographic and diplomatic assets 3 use of Pakistani terrain and resources in the historical defeat of Soviet Union in Afghanistan which eventually became a source of the demise of Soviet Union employment of pakistani land air and sea in the war uh, against terrorism is perhaps the singular historical example of cooperation between two countries in this world pakistan's importance can be determined from the decisions taken by united states and the free world in the past pakistan was a member of cento Pakistan was a member of CETO and now Pakistan enjoys the status of a non NATO member in the world. I would finish at this point and I would like I would like to request all the uh, uh, people here to try and determine why is Pakistan being ignored or sidelined by America. Thank you very much. what was the results of that inter 10 years of war in in afghanistan with soviet union pakistan received over 4 million refugees drugs and gu- guns came to pakistan in the result of that uh, war the the national fabric of pakistan broke apart because of that uh, war and the biggest thing was that the ussr broke into pieces in the result of that war this was the achievement of that 10 years of war and what was the benefit to united states us became the only superpower in the world because of our 
forces our people sacrifice the life and the U.S. become the only power in the world. Now, after 9-11, U.S. went again. We sided with the U.S. We fought uh, along the side. We gave them the support. Results were, what were the results? Taliban in, emerged in Pakistan. There were no Taliban before that in Pakistan. Pakistan already sacrificed 70,000 lives, 63,000 soldiers, and sorry, 63,000 civilians and over 7,000 soldiers. No one in the world has sacrificed that, mon, that much life against the terrorism, what Pakistan has a, did and achieved. We lost $120 billion in economy. We got $30 billion from U.S. The net loss is $90 billion so far and counting. U.S. want to give a lead, leading role to India in Afghanistan. India is a threat to existence of Pakistan. Let me give you one or two numbers. Pakistan is the neighbor of Afghanistan. And India is 1,149 miles apart from Afghanistan. When Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan, we sided with Afghans and we sided with America. India was standing with USSR. Again, we have sacrificed over 70,000 people and India is intervening in Pakistan from Afghanistan. India, India's role given by the, this administration or United States is not acceptable to Pakistan because that will be a great threat to Pakistan at any cost. Pakistan will not accept. This is what all of us to understand that this demand is not acceptable, is even not negotiable, in my opinion. I will take you to Paris. I will paint a small uh, scene of a drama, and the name of the drama was No Exit, and that was written by none other than Saul Paul Sartre, one of the most famous uh, novelist and a scholar and a philosopher of France. And that uh, play was a stage after, I think, yeah, not middle, after of the Second World War in Paris, and they have a three characters, three characters. Now, I need your attention. Three characters, they die, three sinners, let's say. Three sinners, they die, and they went to the hell. And when they reached to hell, they said, hey, nothing is wrong in hell. There's no fire. There's no snake. There's no devil, no brim stones. So it's fine. And the only punishment they will uh, get there is this, that you have to bother each other. You have to chastise each other. You have to poke each other. They said, OK, fine, we will do that. And one day, in a moment of epiphany, one person, he saw that uh, there's a door is open. So all three of them, they said, oh, let's run away from here, because the door is there. In the next second, they realized that was illusion. They cannot run out. They are here to live ever and ever and forever. And the same goes to Pakistan and America. We have to live there, and we have to work together. We have to work together the, against the tormentor. We don't have to uh, fight each other. We have to work together to fight against the tormentor. And if we decide not to stay there, and if we decide to fall apart, that will be like they said, suicide is a permanent solution of a temporary problem. Suicide is a permanent solution of a temporary problem. We should not do that. I don't think this way, who is right, who is wrong. I think this way, why we are failed. After spending $800 billion in Afghanistan, within $400 billion, we could have made up a new, beautiful Afghanistan. In today's life, in this world where we are breathing now, you cannot win any war. You cannot win any war with the might, with the power. You need some diplomatic channel. If you could have uh, built their infrastructure, roads, hospitals, and schools, and universities, 
they, we can have, we could have won their heart. But instead of doing that, we have been so kind, we have been so dangerous, using all kind of daisy bombs, missiles, that we need a solution, but we need a very simple solution. Involving India is not a solution. Involving India is a problem. Why? Because India has a very fragile relationship with Pakistan and China. We are not going to accept India uh, participation uh, because India keeps punching us from Afghanistan. India keeps sending to terrorists from uh, Afghanistan to Pakistan. So how Pakistan can do this? And we have a long time relationship uh, with um, America. So we should come up with a solution which should be simple. I thank you very much. Ponche local leaders vallon jethe ek paase America Pakistan saanj nu agge vadaun di gall kiti gayi. Othe. पाकिस्तानी ਭਾਈਚਾਰੇ ਸਮੇਤ ਹੋਰ ਭਾਈਚਾਰਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਨਾਲ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਇਕੱਠੇ ਨਸਲਵਾਦ ਖਿਲਾਫ ਲੜਾਈ ਲੜਨ ਦਾ ਹੋਕਾ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਗਿਆ ਅਤੇ ਅਮਰੀਕਨ ਸਿਸਟਮ ਵਿੱਚ ਰਹਿੰਦਿਆਂ ਕੰਮ ਕਰਨ ਦੇ ਮੱਦੇ ਨਜ਼ਰ ਕੁਝ ਸੁਝਾਅ ਵੀ ਦਿੱਤੇ ਗਏ a lot of things number one i learned that um being a member of the immigrant community um regardless of what our credentials are we have immigrants have always had to reinvent themselves we have always had to find a way to make it happen learn a new culture learn a new perspective find another way to skin a cat so that we can survive because most of us come here because we want something better for um for our families and it's the same way in politics in politics uh it's very different from uh and in government it's very different from what most people think it is and you know we see uh passing here and it's very important that you start to create awareness of the history of Pakistan and its relationship with the United States what a good friend Pakistan has been to the United States the sacrifices that they have made the fact that Pakistan is one of the biggest victims of terrorism we see them uh, and and it's important that you market this outside of your community mainstream community is just hearing the Donald Trump talking points they're not hearing what you're speaking about here so it's important that pasni i would recommend pasni create uh, a communications uh, uh, committee that's going to market that's going to find other ways to get this message out the biggest leverage that i believe in this dynamic that pakistan has on united states to find a dialogue to get back engaged is the fact that china is competing with the us for domination of world markets and pakistan can easily say and china will welcome them with open arms and say look we want us is not cooperating with us we want to deal with you and china can give preferential trade agreements to pakistan that hurt those billionaires in the us that are concerned about that those same billionaires who might be happy with those uh, you know with the trump uh, disciples who are giving them tax breaks they also don't want the noose around them on international commerce so it's important that pakistan do not eliminate their leverage if they jump right away then there's nothing to talk about it's important that that card and that your community starts to create awareness in the business community in this country about the impact of changing that balance closing the door on pakistan so they have no option but to turn to the opposition economic opposition of united states and that trump is pushing that dynamic and it's going to affect american economy right the humanity of what we're talking about is not going to move the trumps is not going to move those who are against us it's what's in their interest and is not in their interest to hurt the same business community that that is applauding them now for for helping them. So I have spent my entire career fighting for kids and families both at home and abroad. I have forged partnerships between business organizations and nonprofits and governments to tackle issues including economic development and poverty alleviation and women's economic empowerment and access to health care and paid family leave and government transparency. I have work to restore economically depressed communities around the world including working with farmers to help them use mobile phone technology to better negotiate their prices but recently as i've turned my focus to raising my family i've noticed how our own community in the new york second is is struggling and as most of you in this room know we don't have a voice in congress 
which is why a year ago, I started a grassroots group to engage Long Islanders in the political process. And I thought that it would mostly be Democrats who were alarmed by Donald Trump's policies. But it turns out we have a lot of Republicans and a lot of independents in our group because they want new leadership. And in the last year, we have mobilized more than 3,000 people across this district to lobby their local leaders, to have protests, to engage voters, to knock on doors, to get involved in local elections. And um, a year ago, yesterday, Peter, uh, a year ago yesterday, Donald Trump signed an executive order that banned immigrants and refugees from seven Muslim-majority countries. And what was so shocking about that executive order was not only how it blatantly targeted the Muslim community, but how it also completely turned its back on the principles that our country was founded on. And Peter King is, was completely in support of that Muslim ban. And as I watched the stories and I listened to the news and I saw people who were scared and confused being detained at airports, I couldn't help, think, I couldn't help but think about my grandparents who came here as refugees. And if they hadn't had the opportunity to pursue their American dream, I wouldn't be here today raising my two beautiful, healthy kids in the house that they bought more than 70 years ago. And we have to do this, we have to take this approach step by step because unfortunately the President of the United States is not on the ballot until 2020. And his comments and, and his tweets have certainly gotten him in trouble and certainly have gotten the attention of this community as of late. There's very little that we can do about that right now. But we will have the opportunity to do that in 2020. The important thing that we have to focus on is getting people in Washington to understand that Pakistan is our friend, that Pakistan has been a strategic ally. Pakistan is not an enemy. Pakistan is not the problem. The problem is Afghanistan. You know, in the, in the military, the United States military, we're very good and we have very expensive equipment. We can go in and, and defeat the enemy in, in very short order. But what we're not good at is rebuilding countries. Afghanistan is one of the poorest countries in the world. One of their top exports is opium. And as we struggle through the opioid and heroin crisis, Afghanistan has certainly contributed to those conditions. So when we go in and we defeat the Taliban and we thought things were going to be fine, we put Karzai in place and things weren't going the way we thought they would go, the Taliban has gained strength. The challenge that we face is we have a lot of poor farmers and a lot of, a lot of poverty, one of the highest um, rates of illiteracy in the world. It's a poor country. We can use the money that we spend on munitions in building infrastructure in this poor country. That would have served us well. Providing more instability, economic instability in the region is not a solution. It's not a solution. It will create more chaos. So we have to have people that understand that Pakistan is a strategic ally, and they've worked with us. They've worked with us and with our military uh, to defeat and to, um, um, to suppress the efforts of terrorists, because we understand the impact of terrorism and chasing the Taliban and the terrorists through the mountains of Afghanistan and Tora Bora and, and Bora Bora. And um, we understand that, going through that porous border that's there. So that is not uh, something that, that blame should not be put on your shoulders. But we should have a dialogue, that, that an increased dialogue that understands that challenge. Unfortunately, one of the other issues is not, not only having a, a president that seeks to um, provide diplomacy through tweets without really any understanding of the implications and complications and difficulties of doing that, he has underfunded our State Department. We don't have diplomats in some of these countries that are strategic allies. We don't have those, those, those conversations and communications that we used to have. So there's a dialogue so that we can kind of tamper down some of the more um, uh, unfortunate things that our president has said. Because I think we've learned by now that he speaks before he thinketh, right? Far too often. And that's very dangerous. So we need diplomats and people who understand foreign policy and diplomacy in the State Department to, 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 to kind of keep those conversations going and smooth the waters when those waters get rough because our president tends to react on emotions and non-intelligence or certainly understanding of diplomacy. 
So one of the things of first order that I will be fighting for is ensure that the State Department, that we not only fund the military, which the Republicans are very good at doing, but we actually fund and ensure that the people are in place, the resources are in place in our State Department so that we can have those communications, so we can keep that dialogue going, so that Pakistan can remain a, a true ally and a friend, but we have to have people there that understand that. Consulate General of Pakistan, the Numainde. ਨਈਮ ਇਕਬਾਲ ਚੀਮਾ ਨੇ ਅਮਰੀਕਾ ਨਾਲ ਮਿਲ ਕੇ ਕੰਮ ਕਰਨ ਦੀ ਇੱਛਾ ਪ੍ਰਗਟਾਈ ਅਤੇ ਸਿੱਖ ਨੁਮਾਇੰਦੇ ਡਾਕਟਰ ਅਮਰਜੀਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਅਮਰੀਕਾ ਪਾਕਿਸਤਾਨ ਸੰਬੰਧਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਸੁਧਾਰਨ ਵਿੱਚ ਸਿੱਖਾਂ ਦੇ ਰੋਲ ਸੰਬੰਧੀ ਆਪਣੇ ਵਿਚਾਰ ਪੇਸ਼ ਕੀਤੇ ਗਏ ਅੰਤ ਨੂੰ ਮੁੱਖ ਮਹਿਮਾਨ ਕਾਂਗਰਸਮੈਨ ਟਾਮ ਸਾਊਜ਼ੀ ਨੇ ਸਭ ਨਾਲ ਮਿਲ ਕੇ ਚੱਲਣ ਦਾ ਭਰੋਸਾ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਅਤੇ ਗਿਲੇ ਸ਼ਿਕਵੇ ਦੂਰ ਕਰਕੇ ਇਕੱਠੇ ਕੰਮ ਕਰਨ ਦਾ ਸੁਨੇਹਾ ਦਿੱਤਾ this relationship uh, congressman uh, this relationship between pakistan and usa is very important for pakistan and this has always been very important and uh, we would like to preserve this relationship and would, we would like to strengthen this relationship unfortunately this is uh, the relationship is under a little uh, stress these days uh, for the reasons uh, already um, explained by uh, the esteemed speakers however uh, just one thing uh, that i mean we feel that uh, pakistan is uh, viewed uh, by united states of america through different lenses sometimes it is through the lens of afghanistan sometimes it's through the lens of um, um, india and sometimes it's through the lens of uh, counter terrorism uh, so we would request and urge the united states uh, of america to view pakistan as it is the uh, the uh, the profile of the country uh, the credentials of the country the size of the country and uh, the the stress this is not uh, new uh, there have been um, uh, ups and downs in our relationship in the past and we have to um, overcome uh, these differences and dispel these misunderstandings like we have been doing uh, in the past uh, so for that uh, it is important that we keep uh, the institutional linkages open and we work together uh to um, to dispel these misunderstandings pakistan uh, us must appreciate that pakistan has done a lot on uh, on the front of war against terrorism has uh, suffered a lot of uh, uh, loss of life and uh, has uh, uh, lost to uh, the economy of pakistan uh the uh, the afghanistan uh, is the major challenge and uh, uh, we have been doing this uh, we have been fighting this war since last uh, 16 17 years uh so uh, we feel that i mean we should continue uh, working together and uh, 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 as a solution uh, the sustainable uh, uh, resettlement of uh, repatriation of afghan refugees uh, would be a, a, a solution uh, in this uh, regard and uh, the relationship although i mean uh, there have been two levels uh, uh, of this relationship one the government to government relationship there have been ups and downs but the good thing is that we have a very strong uh, pakistani american community of uh, approximately 1.5 million and this people to people relationship uh, have uh, always contributed a lot in strengthening and preserving our relationship um, i must appreciate uh, the pasni and other strong pakistani associations uh, they are playing their role um, so they uh, should continue uh, playing this role and we would uh, request and urge um, the uh, honorable congressman uh, to listen to their concerns and to understand uh, the point of view of pakistan and uh, share uh, their concerns and thoughts with your uh, leadership thank you very much assalam alaikum good afternoon sat sri akal brothers and sisters today when congressman Tom Swazi stepped in he sh shook my hand and said a sick here i said yes and i'll explain that what is the sick factor today while we are talking about restoring the good relationship with between america and pakistan how sick factor in all this south asian map not in present day history but even in the past is important there has been a talk of rama iqbal who mentioned kabul as the center of peace so that the whole of south asia whole of subcontinent may be in peace we saw the clipping of winston churchill who described afghans as warlike race fiercely independent and in the one battle where churchill was wounded 
he was saved by a sick soldier bringing him to on his back and being in Washington for 18 years where in National Press Building I had an office I realized that American opinion makers, lawmakers, and decision makers don't know much about South Asia, and most of the briefing for them comes from Indian influenced think tanks or their lobby, so that so most of the time they are not correct. Very few people know. We talked about the Durand line, which was drawn in 1893 when Durand was packed from London to Kabul for a compromise, but that border, which is close to today 3,000 miles between Pakistan and Afghanistan, was actually carved by the Sikh General Hari Singh Nalua during the period of Maharaja Ranjit Singh in 1830s, and with a little bit of changes, that is the Durand Line. And why Afghanistan is important but for Sikhs as well today, we, the 30 million people, we, our civilization between the Pakistan border and the river Jamna, we are sandwiched, sandwiched between the two nuclear-equipped countries, India and Pakistan. During the 47 period, we were the third party to the negotiation of transfer of power. Unfortunately, due to our naive leadership at that time, we sided with the Indian Union, but with the result, and congressman can, through his research scholars in the office, can find out that what is happening to the minorities in India today, how over 100,000 Sikhs has been killed in the last 30 years, what is happening to 200 million Muslims there, why Christians were not able to celebrate Christmas this time in the states of Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh, and others, and how a Nazi-like regime with that slogan, as yesterday was Holocaust Remembrance Day, and I was looking at Congressman's comment where he quoted Martin Luther King Jr., that darkness cannot drive out darkness, L light can do that, hatred cannot drive out hatred, only love can do that, and today the ideology there of the rulers, one leader, one race, one people, Hindu, Hindi, Hindustan. That is where, as the Sikhs, we are concerned that what will happen tomorrow, if anything happens, the way they are playing with the whole politics today, any confrontation between India and Pakistan tomorrow will end up in the nuclear thing, not with the traditional weapons, and our whole race, our whole civilization can be wiped out. So that is very important for us United States, a great power, a beacon of hope, champion of human rights, and it is a responsibility that there should be a balance in the relationship there. There should be a balance to see that how one-fifth of the humankind where it lives in South Asia, who is the culprit, not just going by the propaganda or going by the other things will solve the problem. Let me hope for the best. Let we see that as I'll quote Martin Luther King in the closing, injustice anywhere is the threat to justice everywhere. We are suffering an Indian map, and we expect that our congressman will take a right lead. Though as a Sikh, I am proud. We have a U.S. Congressional Sikh Caucus in which over 50 congressmen, bipartisan, they are members of it, Congressman Germandi from Yuba City, California is the co-chair of that, but still I thought on the invitation of my brothers and sisters here I came to show my support for this idea that United States should keep a balance in the South Asian politics and a friend in need is a friend indeed. This we should always remember. Thank you very much. The relationship between Pakistan and the United States of America, it's very complicated over a long period of time with a lot of different factors that went into what happened at the particular time. I've always had a very good relationship with the Pakistani-American community from back when I was county executive. Remember, I was elected in 2001. My primary was on September 11th of 2001. It was delayed to September 25th of 2001. I took office on January 1st of 2002. And from that time, I think that the reason I have such a good relationship with many Pakistani-Americans is because I stood up 
for the Pakistani Americans and all Muslims that they not be discriminated against here locally. And that was really been my focus. Even the Sikh community where, you know, everybody thinks the Sikhs are, are Muslims because they wear the turbans, but they, we know that that's not the case. But, you know, I hired a, a, a Sikh, turban-wearing Sikh, as a, you know, and it was a very good message that was sent. Uh, so I think that I have a good relationship with the Pakistani American community, with the Muslim community as a whole, because I've always tried to be a good representative of the people that I represent and look out for your interest. <clears throat> Germany and Japan are two of our closest allies. You know, think of the Vietnam War, and now we have tremendous relationship with Vietnam. Uh, unfortunately, South Korea and North Korea, we have a great relationship with South Korea, but not North Korea. We haven't been able to figure that one out. But, you know, it's important that we recognize that we have to try and move forward. And that's an important thing to do, is to have an open heart to try and be open to the idea of resolving our crisis, not forgetting injustices that have been done, not forgetting wrongs that have been done or ways that things have been handled, but trying to have that goal of, of moving forward. Uh, certainly there's many places in the world that are still in conflict because of that lack of understanding and that lack of desire to move forward. But it's really my fervent hope that Pakistani Americans and Indian Americans could play a tremendous role in helping to create a peaceful environment in that part of the world. Kashmir was the big push that was made constantly. Please try and do something about this. Please try and represent our interest regarding this. And when I went to Washington, D.C., I made a point of trying to speak to experts and speak to people in government, to speak to people in the State Department, to speak to people in the military, uh, to speak to the what's called the Congressional Research Services, to try and uh, analyze these issues. And quite frankly, I got a very cold shoulder. Because when you look at the map, and you all know the map very well, uh, you know, Kashmir on the eastern border is not the big concern of the United States. The big concern of the United States of America is the western border with Afghanistan. Because so much money has been invested, so much treasure, so much blood, so many lives have been invested in trying to resolve that. And we've heard a lot about that, and that's a very complex issue in and of itself. But as a result, there was very little interest in discussing with me the issue of Kashmir because the focus was on Pakistan's border with Afghanistan. So I made a point of going to meet with the Pakistani ambassador. I went to go to his uh, office in Washington. I didn't bring any staff with me. I didn't bring any experts with me. I went to have a private meeting with him, and I told him I represent many Pakistani Americans. I have very close personal relationships with many people, very big supporters, people that I have personal friendships with over a long period of time. And I would like to represent the interests of the Pakistani American community, but, and they're concerned about Kashmir, but everything I'm hearing from the people in the United States government and the officials and the experts is that they're concerned about the Pakistan-Afghani border. And they feel that they have not done enough to address this particular issue. The ambassador was very strong in his commentary, saying, you know, how many people we have lost in Pakistan to terrorism, what we have done to uh, stop terrorism as far as the number of terrorist events that were taking place in Pakistan before, reducing that number dramatically within Pakistan. He talked about the efforts that were made to try and repopulate some of the areas along the ungoverned areas of Pakistan. Uh, and as efforts being made to try and secure the border more than had been done historically. So I talked about that, and I still talk about that with other people when I speak about these issues, what the Pakistani ambassador represented to me. I'm on foreign affairs and armed services. I've made a point of when I talk to different officials to, of bringing up the issue of Pakistan. And uh, I visited Afghanistan. It was one of the first uh, uh, trips that I went on as a member of the Armed Services Committee. I met with General Nicholson. It was, you made the reference to the 60 Minutes uh, show that was on just a few weeks ago that I watched. Uh, and I met with General Nicholson, and we talked about the strategy in Afghanistan as far as the military strategy. And there's a five-point strategy militarily in Afghanistan related to trying to strengthen their armed forces, their army, trying to strengthen their air force and getting the air force and the army to work together more closely, strengthen their special forces, uh, to try and build up their civilian police department. And the fifth pillar of the American strategy was to get more from Pakistan, to help more with this effort. And this was, you know, early in the year. You know, we've seen what's happened with the president more recently. But this was part of the strategy, and it was a very coherent strategy that made sense as to what they were saying. 
Uh, but my concern then and my concern continuing today, which I'll be talking about hopefully over the next couple weeks, is I'm concerned about the non-military strategy in Afghanistan. And people have made reference to this as well today. I don't see that we have a clear five-point or three-point or ten-point, whatever, strategy as far as how we are investing our American dollars to try and rebuild the civil society of Afghanistan. The answer cannot be that we're just going to kill more of them before they kill more of us. That will never, you know, it was, uh, 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 an eye for an eye, and we all end up blind. It'll never work that we just kill more of them before they kill more of us. Now, that doesn't mean we can back off. It means we have to try and have a policy and a strategy that makes sense on both sides. Why are we in Afghanistan? There's so many people in the United States of America that are concerned that we've spent so much time and money in Afghanistan, and why can't we just leave? We can't leave because there are 20 terrorist organizations that operate out of Afghanistan, and uh, 22. And the concern is not so much the Taliban, even though it's a big issue, but the Taliban is not why we are in Afghanistan, because the Taliban wants to take over the region. They don't want to come and blow up people in Europe and in the United States of America. The concern is about other terrorist organizations that use Afghanistan as a safe haven to try and organize and then take their organizing efforts to export their knowledge and their violence to other parts of the world. Those are the people that we're concerned about. That's why the United States military is there. In the meanwhile, the Taliban is getting more and more effective uh, politically in the region and using violence as well. We just saw this awful bo bombing in Kabul. Uh, was it just yesterday or was it two days ago? Two days ago. Uh, I mean, just horrific, the suffering that you've experienced in Pakistan and that certainly has, is, is, goes on all the time in Afghanistan as well. So I'm new to this whole thing. I'm a freshman congressman. And my relationship, as I said, has historically been uh, based upon trying to stand up for the interests and rights of Muslim Americans, including Pakistani Americans here in my community.